love that's in the air. Love is in the air. Do you feel that love, Guillermo? I do, Jimmy. It's a lot of love. There's so much love, you're about to do what? I'm about to explode. He's about to explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you, do you have a plan for Valentine's Day? Are you uh, ready? Have you thought it through? No, not yet. I don't have no plan yet. You better make a plan. Hopefully tonight or tomorrow. You know, we're so focused on the Super Bowl, I fear that many will forget we're less than a week away from Valentine's Day, or as it's also known, the day every Kardashian's boyfriend has to spend $40,000 on rose petals. Down. <laughs> this is the first time ever Valentine's is the day after Super Bowl. They should have pushed it a week. They really <laughs> give us some time to sober up. And if you're single on Valentine's Day, did you know that there are apps that people use to have sex with other people now? It's true, they call them dating apps. And they're, not only are they the ones you heard of, like Tinder and Bumble and all that, there are so many ways to meet people who are right up your alley. These are all real apps. Uh, no jokes here. HUD is for casual hookups. Cougar for older women looking for younger men. Woo Plus for plus size people also known as Kitchen Mingle. There's a uh, Christian Mingle for Christians, J-Date for Jews, Mutual for Mormons, Salam for Muslims, Agnostics for people who don't believe in anything, Kink Life for bondage enthusiasts, Three Fun for threesomes, Millionaire Match is for, I guess, ugly millionaires, I don't know. <laughs> Farmers D if you want to date a farmer, DW for dating widows, 420 singles for stoners, there's Grazer for vegans, there's Howler for furries, and inmates, if you want to date a prisoner, which is a, a really good idea. We're gonna, I think we're gonna get to the point where there's an app called uh, Mike Richardson, and there's just one guy named Mike Richardson. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'll tell you something. I miss the old ways of dating. You, you'd tell Will Smith you wanted a boyfriend and he'd hook you up with Kevin James. It was as simple as that. When there are more dating apps than apps on the menu at the Cheesecake Factory, we failed as a society. <laughs> Guillermo, you had a big night. Do you know what happened tonight? Did you see? No, I haven't seen You were on a very big show tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Guillermo was on it. Jeopardy earlier tonight, the game show. Oh, yeah. Oh, where, yeah. Um, they do the college championship every year, and one of the categories this year was historic mean tweets, and you'll never guess who they invited to read them. Historic mean tweets, 200. Here's Guillermo. Napoleon, nice work invading this giant country on June 24, 1812. You moron. Hashtag winter is coming. Joey. What is Russia? That's it. Great delivery. I mean, maybe I'll let you host something. I hope so, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> you would be a great host of Jeopardy. Can, say this is Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy. <laughs> Perfect. You're a natural. The Republican <laughs> Party is having a bit of an internal squabble right now. The party is divided over whether the violent insurrection of January 6th was a violent insurrection or just a lively sightseeing tour of the Capitol. The Republican National Committee, the RNC, has been trying to downplay the attack. They released a statement describing it as ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. <laughs> just a group of ordinary citizens wearing bare skin and horns. <laughs> smearing feces on the walls of the Capitol. Just ordinary. So Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, poked his head out from under his shell to counter that statement, <laughs> offering this very matter-of-fact assessment of what it was. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election from one administration to the next. That's what it was. Well, welcome to the resistance, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Just to show you how far down the crazy hole we've gone, we're now applauding Republicans who are willing to admit that what happened, happened. <laughs> but there's not just crazy, there's some dumb going, too. Exhibit A tonight is House member Marjorie Taylor Greene. Klan mom was busy defending the storm Trumpers on OAN, and while she was at it, took some time to make a rather outlandish claim about Nancy Pelosi. So everything is completely out of control. Not only do we have the D.C. jail, which is the D.C. gulag, but now we have Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you got cold soup, you better watch it, because Nancy Pelosi's coming for it. <laughs> just, these must be the soup Nazis Seinfeld warned us about so many years. And it, well, if the gazpacho police get hold of you, they'll throw you right in the goulash. So be very careful. 
There are a lot of characters on this team, Trump. Many of them are still trying to undo the election. Trump's new spokesmonster is a woman named Liz Harrington, who told Steve Bannon, we're going to be hearing about this for a long time. The main point right now is this is not going away, and it's never going to go away until we get the correct result and fix our elections. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah, that's what the lady at the supercuts told you when she cut those bangs. <laughs> this is not... I think what she's trying to say is, in the year 2030, when Donald Trump is 83, he's still going to be screaming about this. He's Don Quixote fighting windmills, which is something he's also done. He fought windmills. Meanwhile, the Biden administration spent the day shooting down a new imaginary menace that conservatives are frothing about. The White House had to debunk a widely circulated story from a right-wing website that said the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is giving free pipes to crackheads. They are not doing that, but that hasn't stopped people like Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas from sounding the alarm. We got two words for America today, crack pipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's true, that was two words. And like my dad, the police officer said, crime and drug abuse go hand in hand. It's like peanut butter and jelly. The more drug crimes you have, the more crime we're going to have as well. Well, then we are going to have to work together to get these sandwiches off the streets. <laughs> you remember Gumby, the uh, little green guy? It looks like the Hulk had a skin tag removed. There he is <laughs> with his pal Pokey. Well, after years of being owned by the Cloakey family, the Fox Corporation has acquired the rights to his Gumbiness. And Fox being Fox, they have big plans for the little green guy. Hey, Gumby, what's up? Joe Biden's giving out free crack pipes to black people. Uh, I don't think that's true, Gumby. Hold on a second. Is the real drug crisis in this country really that crackheads don't have enough crack pipes? Wow, Gumby, you're an a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, he is like 80 years old or something. So. Speaking of drugs, you know, uh, we do our show here on Hollywood Boulevard, and almost everyone is on drugs. And with that said, it's time to play America's favorite THC-themed game show. It's time to play Who's High? Oh, this is such a simple game. It works like this. My cousin Sal, there's cousin Sal. Hi, cousin Sal, how hey, are you? Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I have to apologize. We went up and down the boulevard. Everyone is high on marijuana. <laughs> we are gonna play Who is on Meth? Hit it, man. <laughs> So no. what we're going to try to determine, what I will try to determine, is which of the three people that we're looking at right now is high. One is high, and uh, two are not, right, Sal? That's right. OK, so it's my job to figure out who is. And uh, well, let's start by meeting these folks. Uh, here we go. Let's start with Ryan. Ryan is your name? It is. Ryan, where are you from? I am originally from San Diego, and I currently live in West Hollywood. Okay, very good. And uh, I see you're, you're battling with a little puberty right now. It's about time. Okay, what do you do for work, Ryan? I'm a freelancer and I also work in hotels. You're a freelancer, you work in hotels. Okay, well that could mean weed dealer for sure. A uh, freelancer who works in hotels. All right, let's meet the uh, young woman standing to your uh, left there. And her name is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, Tammy. Wow, we got like a cartoon voiceover crew here tonight. <laughs> Tammy, what do you do for work? I'm a waitress and I work in a kosher store. And where do you work? What... Mr. Kosher and Denny's. Oh, Mr. Kosher and Denny's. Yes, you have to live in LA, it's expensive. Yeah, right, I know, but that's interesting. It's quite a range of restaurants you got going there, huh? Restaurant and grocery store. Restaurant and grocery store. Yes. Okay, so you're not accidentally bringing a grand slam to uh, a rabbi's table or something. Absolutely not, it's not kosher. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Is it kosher to work in both of those places? I, I wash before and I make sure I'm kosher to go to work. You get the bacon out of your hair. Yes, and then I put my mouth to speak the right language. <laughs> okay, very good. And finally, we have Ruben. Hello, Ruben. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm doing well, Ruben. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. What do you do for work, Ruben? I'm a full-time student. Okay, what are you studying? I study business. Okay, all right. Well, right away, uh, Ruben seems like he'd be, like, just off the cuff, I'd go with Ruben. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's wearing green. I don't know, but... Let's, let's get real close and let's get a look at their eyes, and uh, that's helpful for sure. Uh, start with Ryan there. Okay, Ryan. Ryan is definitely hiding something. 
<laughs> All right, now let's see Tammy. 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 Oh, no, Tammy's got two jobs. I don't think she has time to be messing around with weed. And finally, Ruben. And let's take a look at Ruben, who is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, come on. It's. Yeah, well. Okay. I don't need. I don't need. Ruben doesn't even. Doesn't even. He, all he has is pupils. <laughs> Ruben, I am going to say that you are high. Are you? I'm not. You're not! <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Well, let's take another look. Uh, maybe you can answer some questions here. Uh, Ryan, what did you have for lunch? I did not have lunch. Oh, all right. Well, then I'm going to say Tammy is, is, is my answer. Tammy, are you high? Yes, I am. Oh, wow, Tammy. I need it. I work a lot. <laughs> all right. Wow, do we have prizes for them? We yeah. sure do. I have a Frisbee for everyone. Tammy, you can pick what color. You have what? The Frisbees. Frisbees. Oh, good choice. All right, all right. There you go. Enjoy, guys. Run out and play. Thank you very much. All right, we're, um... All right, well, it could have been better. Let's bring in another group and see if... Let's give this another try here. Good luck with this. All right, now, this looks like the cast of a show. All right, well, let's start. Let's meet uh, contestant number one is Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Ah, oh, hi. Hi, Hi Jim. Jim. <laughs> All right. John's off to a big start. John, uh, yes, look at the camera. Uh, I see you're wearing glasses, which may be to disguise your eyes. John, uh, may I ask you, which direction is the ocean? That way. OK, that's wrong. <laughs> Um, all right, all didn't right. didn't say which ocean. <laughs> You're right, Sal. <laughs> all right, and let's meet our next contestant, who is Justin. Hello, Justin. What's up, what's up? Tell us a little bit about yourself, Justin. I'm from Texas. I do personal protection and private security. Uh -huh. I've been living in L.A. for like nine years now. Oh, nine years. And do you do security for any famous people? Not right now. I'm still freelancing with it. Okay, all right. All right, and finally, we have Monica. Hi, Monica. Hey, Jimmy, how high are you? I mean, how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Now, Monica, now, now this seems like for sure Monica would be the one. I mean, if, if you're not high, it's only by accident, right, Monica? I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, Monica, what do you do for a living? I'm an artist, and I work at Renaissance Fair. Oh, my god. <laughs> <laughs> Miss two. It's own, but I know they try to trick me, and this seems like it's too obvious. Lou, what do you think? I mean, Monica's outfit looks like it's made of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> but they do try and trick you. So. Yeah, I know. It seems so obvious that it would be Monica, but then again, Jonathan doesn't know which way to get. Let's talk to Jonathan again for one more minute. Jonathan, what do you do for a living? I'm a massage therapist. Okay, a massage therapist. How long have you been doing that? Mm, for around nine years now. Nine years, and you love it? You really get in there? I'm really good at it. Yeah, I like it. You like it, okay. All Jimmy, right. You, you can't to... see, but Jonathan's got mushrooms all over his shirt, like patterns of mushrooms. Oh. 70s. I don't want to sway you either way. But... Interesting. Uh, do you eat mushrooms, Jonathan? Yeah, so, some kinds. <laughs> oh, and then we got Justin right there in the middle, and it could also be him. I mean, what are we going to do? I think we're going to go with, I, we got to go to Monica. Monica, I say you're high. Are you high? I'm sorry, Jimmy. It's not me. It's not you. <laughs> How? Well, then I got to go with Jonathan. Jonathan, are you high? Yes, I am. You are. <laughs> yes, and you're not. All right. All right. Good. We have, uh, jars of Nutella for our contestants. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button, so please click now. I'm hungry.